Dallas City Hall one year ago today. Oh! Sweet! Sweet! That is fantastic. Well, I have some object as I was. I emceed that too, and it was a great, great joy. And I remember that night one year ago, and obviously tonight is right in front of us, and I'm looking so forward to Election Day 2010. Is it November? If you take like a legal pad, make three columns, one year ago, tonight, Election Day 2010, looks like this. One year ago, this whole Tea Party movement had hope for success. Tonight, we know it's successful. We know it. And on Election Day, that success brings about real change. One year ago, big spenders in Washington didn't know what to make of us. Tonight, they do. Because on Election Day 2010, they will know that we meant what we have been saying. One year ago, the media covering the whole Tea Party phenomenon asked questions about us. Tonight, these last couple of weeks, they've been telling lies about us. After November 2nd, they will record the stories of how we help change America. A year ago, we wondered if we could keep this passion alive for more than a little while. Now, we know we can, and we focus on keeping it alive until November. And after November, we reset, focus, and get the job done in 2012. There is a gentleman who's going to bring some of his expertise up here because an enormous amount of the Tea Party passion has to do with health care. And there's another term that gets thrown around a whole lot because we have a feeling that the people in power now are trying to take us in that direction. And that is the very, very dark prospect of socialized medicine. Ooh. To help fend that off, we have to understand what it is. Uh, a physician here locally um, at John Peter Smith Hospital, and I'm wearing a white coat. I uh, didn't get invited to the White House. I, uh, actually, I actually get my coat dirty seeing patients as opposed to being in an ivory tower. So, I'm glad to be here with you this evening. Uh, I just wanted to uh, go over a few issues regarding uh, the Obamacare bill, and uh, you know I want to talk to you uh, about three different aspects, three different aspects of uh, uh, being an American that, from my unique perspective as a physician. Uh, first of all, I'm real concerned about the Obamacare bill. Uh, you know, I, I work in the academic area. I do some teaching with students and uh, as well as medical residents. I'm also in private practice and work for both the state and the county government in Tarrant County. Uh, I'm going to go over some. Uh, information regarding the health care bill, but I'm going to give you some references. One website is uh, docsforpatientcare.org, and that's DLCS, the number four, patientcare.org. They have a lot of good information you can reference there, as well as the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation talked about 10 different um, uh, disasters of Obamacare, and I'm just going to highlight a couple of them. Uh, one. One is uh, that new spending is going to grow the federal deficit by about $2.5 trillion, according to the uh, Heritage Foundation. There's going to be new taxes, of course, uh, with uh, mandates, and uh, employers will have uh, uh, fees associated with not insuring uh, their employees, up to $2,000 for every employee uh, after the first 30 employees. Regulations will grow uh, government control over health care. Expansion of broken entitlement programs, uh, they're expecting about 32 million newly insured assured uh, patients by 2019 over, over with a program that already can't handle and is overburdened as it is. Uh, we're, ne we're neglecting Medicare, Medicare which is uh, due to be insolvent by 2016 and there's also of course questions of constitutionality uh, with uh, them forcing people to buy health care. I also have concerns about rationing. I know rationing is going to be part of this because they're going to have to do it. Uh, the end of life counseling is part of rationing with the death care panels. Uh, hospitals 
will be fined for rehospitalizing people, which means again there's going to be worse health care. Um, doctors' fees have been frozen uh, by Medicaid for the past 15 years. Now, so the, the best and brightest people are not going into medicine right now. So the future of health care is looking rather bleak. Uh, tort reform, of course, was not addressed as well in this Obamacare bill. So some issues uh, have not been taken care of in that respect. We have to return to fiscal responsibility to fix this problem. We're going to have to replace elected officials that chose not to listen and follow the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. We have to replace all those guys this November, and we can defund this mess, and in 2012, we can repeal this bill by getting a different administration involved with this. Dr. Benjamin Rush was one of the top three founding fathers, and most people don't know Dr. Benjamin Rush, but uh, he was, along with Benjamin Franklin and George Washington, was one of the top three. He said that patriotism is as much a virtue as justice and is as necessary for the support of societies as natural affection is for the support of families. The love of, the love of country is both a moral and a religious duty. It comprehends not only the love of our neighbors, but of millions of our fellow creatures, not only of the present, but of future generations. We've got to look out for future generations. I just want to touch on a couple of other topics from my unique perspective as an American. I'm also an American, an American of African descent. I'm first of all an American. But talk about this racism stuff, you know, and unfortunately the cry of racism has uh, become like uh, the boy that cried wolf, because you, you don't know when it's real anymore, and uh, you know, I've been part of the 912 Fort Worth group as well as the Dallas Tea Party, uh, and I've met nothing but good, loving, supportive people that love this country and want the best for this country. And I, and I like to say shame on the, the, the progressives, shame on the, 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 and not all Democrats are like this, I know this, but shame on the Democratic Party people that do this kind of stuff, that cry racism, and, and point fingers at people that are good, honest, hardworking people. I've only got a few seconds here, but I do want to mention one other thing. I'm, a, I'm third of all, a Christian American. And that's the most important part. And, and I just want to say, we, we have to understand, you know, we've been suckered into this separation of church and state garbage, which is basically an obscure line from, uh, from a letter by Thomas Jefferson uh, to the uh, uh, Danbury Baptist, in which he talked about a wall of separation, but he was talking about protecting the church from the government, okay? All right? And, and so it's been misinterpreted, it's been misused, and uh, you know, it's funny because most people don't know that the first English Bible in this country was published by the United States Congress for the use in schools. You know, you need to know your history. We as Christians have backed down from where we came from. And we need to understand that the Founding Fathers believed in uh, the importance of Christianity in keeping this republic free. Because without a moral, virtuous people, you can never have freedom. You will have tyranny. I want to thank you very much. I've enjoyed my time with you. God bless you and God bless America.